Hey guys, I decided to start mixing up my videos with new and old content in order to keep the channel more fresh. Let me know your thoughts after watching. For this video, I wanted to tell you guys about the new yearly event introduced this year, the Winter Light Solstice event, which runs from the 22 of December to the 10th of January. This event consists on killing a boss with up to 5 players, doesn't include any sort of boss fighting and doesn't have a level requirement. It can be done by level 20s with the help of higher levels or it can be done by a team of level 50s. First head up to Spargan and use this boat to get teleported to the island. Here you can either find a barrel with a soft hammer inside and use it or pick up one from the ground. Once you have it look around for a bunny bunny, don't kill it and instead use the soft hammer on it and after clicking the body you will get a frozen carrot. Pay attention and don't get the bunnies confused as there is two types. The brighter pink is the one you use the soft hammer and the baleful bunny is a regular monster that can be killed. If you don't see any bunnies in the island, just keep running around until you do because they have a slow respawn timer. But once you have the frozen carrot, make a big snowball by using a regular snowball on another one in the floor, then use the frozen carrot on it to spawn an animated snowman. Kill it and then loot the twinkle farms from it. If you don't get one, then you will have to wait another 5 minutes in order to spawn a new snowman using the same way. Repeat this until you get the twinkle farms. If you don't have snowballs, there is a few spots in the island that look like this, where you can just right click to make snowballs. Throughout this process, kill some of the perch monsters until you loot a perch horn and a broken bell. Once you have all these 3 items, follow this path. At the teleport, use the twig of arms on the broken bell and you will get a perch disguise that allows you to enter the teleport. Once in the actual boss room, you will start next to a bonfire and a green portal. Click on the bonfire and grab the torch from the ground. Then step on the green portal to turn yourself into a leaf golem, head downstairs and go all the way east. If you get hit by one of the beans, you will be transformed back to the human form and need to go back and step on the green portal again. In the leaf golem form, step on the grass and a tree wall will appear. Use it 5 times in order to get 5 branches, pick them from the ground and bring them south. Here will be another bonfire, which you need to use the torch to light it up and then use the branches on it. Everyone needs to do this until a warm fire spawns. Here the idea is to bring the warm fire north so that it explodes next to the boss to unfreeze her. But there's a few things that you need to be careful with. First, as long as possible, it is recommended to summon a skeleton or a demon skeleton beforehand to take some of the aggro from the ice tree. If you summon a skeleton, you can trap it behind firewalls so that it doesn't move and make the ice rolls target them. If you don't want to do that, the proper way will be to have an EK to take the aggro from the warm fire and bring it north. Regardless of who lures the warm fire, it should be just one person while the other keeps doing the previous steps and that person has to use the bonfire on the south beforehand to turn into a burning fire. When luring, be careful that these stones as well as the boss throws a beam in front of them that kills the warm fire, as well as these other stones that have a small AOE kind of like an exori near them that also damage the elemental, but this one doesn't kill it with one hit. Once you bring the warm fire next to the queen, it will do damage to her and then go back and start over again. Do this 4 times and the boss will be on frost and now it can be attacked, but don't worry, it won't fight back, at least at the making of this video. Technically, the only way to fail this boss is by freezing and getting kicked out, out of the room. This happens if you step on the snow on the north area without the burning form, or if you don't go near the bonfire for too long, so just watch out for this. Just make sure this time everyone goes south and click on the bonfire first to turn into a burning form. Then go north and let everyone attack once because the boss dies in like 8 turns, so watch out. If you lose a precious gold, the item is used for the slate mons. To get them, head east in the island and talk to the NPC Frosty about it. The other drops from the boss, like the crowns, icicles, and fire, seem to be only for decoration purposes at the moment, but this can change. And the tokens and the other items are just regular profit, which is usually 5 silver tokens and from 1 to 5 gold tokens, making it a very profitable boss. This boss has a cooldown of 20 hours and every time you want to do it, you must get the items for the disguise again. Lastly, as a bonus, if you're within level 50 to 80s, you should try hunting the perch monsters. At first, I thought they would be really good for profit because while we were doing the quest, the first time we were separately killing these monsters and getting a lot of item drops such as magma and glacier pieces. So I did a hunt on the bottom floors towards the boss and even though I overestimated the drop rate, 
and ended up making like 80k every 15 minutes which might still be good for you, the experience turned out to be decent. I was making 1.7kk an hour on 200% which should be around the 850 on 100% and sure I'm very high level for this monster so I wouldn't say this is the kind of experience that you can get but in terms of damage my level doesn't make much difference because these monsters have 600 HP and their damage is compared to a dragon but where I do make a difference is on my speed to move from pool to pool However, even if you do manage to make even 500k on 100% at a lower level on a solo or duo, it's probably worth it. I recommend if you are a solo EK, probably wait until level 90 to be more efficient. If you are a duo EK and druid, probably even as low as level 60 could hunt here. For solo mages, it might not be worth it at all, but perhaps level 70 should try it out. In the worst case scenario, you might be making some charming points, so give it a chance and let us know in the comments the results. Thank you for watching and see you next time.